Uh, good afternoon and welcome to my presentation for the uh, MPQH. I've got to do a, a whole school change programme for my project. I'd like to propose to you a change that I'd like to do in the school for work by the governors, that's okay. So I'm looking at uh, looking at pupil progress and attainment and developing that further for a particular subject. The aim of my project is to improve the fluency and mastery skills of mathematics become a measurable whole school impact on the progress and the attainment, which goes back to the title of the, the project I've got to do. So the context and general of our school maths over the past few years has been a development area uh, on the school improvement plan for several years now. Data has fluctuated consistently with no apparent reasons for the fluctuations or cohort specific that I can find evidence of at this stage. Data is generally good, expected and greater depth across the school, but there are concerns of fluency and mastery. So the question is, so why should we change if we're doing okay? So I've dug around and looked at the data and analysed in depth over the last four academic years, these are the cohorts. Um, if I pick on a certain year group on the year six currently, as an example in the blue coming across, it starts off with the attainment of 53% <coughs> in 1516. Then came down to 47% the year after, then 40, and then slightly spiked back up to 43% from the last academic year. That's the expected standard. But all year groups generally are coming down, although on the um, current year sevens, so last year's year sixes, last year they got 69% attainment, but previously they've been 50, so they're gradually coming down from the 76. Um, so the data there isn't showing that we are making progress going upwards, we're coming down gradually over time. That would suggest possibly that the fluency and mastery is not there in our school, whilst we're doing okay generally in data. So, for us the question, why should we change? Charles Handy, the age of the paradox, has suggested this model down here is when uh, organisations should do a change within any organisation you're working in. So generally, we should be looking at point A on the graph, so the organisations had a dip, had success, coming up, coming up, coming up. And at some point, which Hannah suggested point A, you should then start thinking about the change to develop while you're hitting your successes. If you do change point A, you're dropping to this area called the VUCA, and there will be some uncertainty and ambiguity over that development, that change is going to go ahead. Unfortunately, most organisations enjoy their success, tail off, and then realise it's too late and then come to the B and they start changing. It's a curve and then stop spiking back up again eventually. I believe, look at the previous data I've just shown you, we've gone past our successes and come down here somewhere and now it's time to change for mm -hmm. us. <clears throat> so what can we change then? So uh, I think we need to develop a, a deeper knowledge <laughs> of our mathematics in our school. We have been using the white rose previously along with uh, mass on target project uh, materials, which is quite good. It did help the fluency reason of problem solving. However, you can look at the data to suggest otherwise it's not as strong as it could be. The data has improved, as of the children, but it's not that, that consistent rate that we need. Um, we have an opportunity to develop that further. I think some staff feel quite pressurised with teaching and mastery, but they haven't got the tools to develop that properly. So we just think, well, what can we use in school to give the staff the tools, but also uh, enhance our children's knowledge um, more consistently across the school. So I've discovered a new uh, scheme, if you like, called Power Maths. It's a comprehensive program which will fit nicely with the white range materials that we're currently using and built upon that knowledge. <coughs> so I've looked at Power Maths generally, and these are sort of five things I've picked out. It does ensure coverage across the spectrum of mathematics. There is steady progression. Uh, it gives lots of opportunities for thinking and talking <coughs> with children. Lots of in-depth <coughs> content reduces the workload, which is a bonus of the uh, well-being of staff and uh, children. And there's lots of teacher support material, which will again link into the workload, reduce that for everybody. Mm -hmm. I've looked at the, um, the financial impact it'll have on the school. 
So I've broken it down. So the initial year, if we were to go down this route, it's just over £3,200 for the first year outlay, which would be one textbook between two to share and one practice book per child per, ter per term. So the textbooks are £6.99 each, which I would share one for two. Practice books are £1.99. And we have an online subscription to the tools that we can use for £320 per term. It then comes down in the subsequent years to £1,800. We've already got the textbooks which we keep using year after year after year, so that, that cost is now gone. And we've just got to keep buying the practice books and the online subscriptions. So it's come down quite significantly. The assessment tool is normally £700. But we, get, we get it free as part of DDAP. It's been negotiated thing as part of DDAP schools are doing it. We're also eligible for joint match funding up to £2,000 from the Maths Hub. Um, so a maximum of £4,000 spend will bring back £2,000 off that there. Because we're spending £3,200 over, they'll pay um, just over £1,600 towards that cost. So actually, the impact there is not that, that much, it'll be a lot, lot cheaper than that, because we're going to get match funding. The two members of staff will go along and train with the Maths Hub to be the experts in the school, to be the masters of mathematics. <coughs> So looks at the benefits to the staff and school if we do go down there. So if you join the Maths Hub, uh, we get high quality support for teacher professional development for the lead teachers. So we'll identify two teachers in school to lead that in school and the brief will be able to come trained. Um, and the Maths degree specialist will facilitate that development of those two teachers. The support material for the head teacher, which is the least issues related to teaching and mastery, is also coming from the Maths Hub, so the head teacher also gets um, upskilled. We've got other opportunities to uh, place with other schools and developing teaching for mastery. I'll come back to that bullet point in a moment. Um, with no charge for participation, and we do get a grant of up to £1,000 to help subsidise teacher release time to go to these courses and meetings. Um, and any financial help, which I only alluded to, the financial part of it for the mass of joining, that's provided we go out of scheme and buy those books. Um, the fourth bullet point to work closely with other schools. I've been I've popped out to um, another DDAT school to look at what they do. We're already currently doing that. Um, their mass leader is quite optimistic they're going to get very good SAS results this year. Um, they've been <coughs> looking at the material, using it quite well, and they said their children are developing well with it. So we can use them for support as well. We've also spoken to Pierce as a company to do Power Maths. And they've given us all just to try out for this term um, some practice books. This is the textbook, which costs uh, six ninety nine normally, and that's the book the children write in, which is one ninety nine. So this material would keep forever and ever. And then termly, we've got six A for year six, six B and six C per term. This is this is matched across the schools, mm. and we just have to keep purchasing these every every year. But these are retained. So we have trials that look at the children suck currently and it's working quite well in our school as well. A bit more benefits into the school and staff. Um, we've got that balance of whole year group versus mixed classes. It would probably be better using that scheme to have a, just a pure mixed year groups which will facilitate better learning and to differentiate your work accordingly for different year groups. Um, and that should enhance the mastery and fluency of the children. The staffing implications also, I think, will be easy to manage and teach because we've got one uh, particular member of staff for the year group, children know who they are, and you get that, uh, that bond with the children teaching them. Head of school is also involved with the group, so it helps free up the sort of staff, and I think it provides more flexibility across the school. Uh, I mentioned this before on a couple of other slides, the reduced workload. There's less planning in the resource material if the plan's all there. So it will save teachers a lot of work having not to think about making the plan, typing it all up because it's all there. It's a case of printing it all off, annotate the planning, it will save a lot of workload, which is what we're trying to reduce. Uh, and also find the resources to use, it's all there ready to go. Uh, the budget, there will be a huge reduction in photocopying of the resources. Yes, we've got to buy the books, which are expensive initially. But we do spend lots of time photocopying lots of things. So if we reduce the photocopying budget down massively, that will save a lot of money. In addition, we use the um, textbooks to write in currently, we don't have to buy those anymore. So actually the cost will come down, 
quite significant that he's not uh, using all his resources anymore. And then for the familiarity, I think the children will be quite happy with what we're doing, working to the same type of scheme on power mass, year on year on year, as the children get more proficient with it, they become very familiar and they know us as they go through the school and transition through different year groups. They know what the challenges are like, they know how it works. For the first year, might be a few teething problems, but I think they'll, um, they'll flourish quite quickly and the confidence will be, be sound with that, that scheme. <clears throat> so, I've looked at a vision for our improvement of what it could look like. Um, so, we've got a clear vision for developing master engaging, high quality CPD, that's the teachers going on that particular training, and high quality resources in the power maths. All staff are fully committed and they are willing to embrace that change and give it a good go. And we're all aware that raising the attainment of maths is a key focus to get those, uh, that data back up again. We need to support the children to, to articulate their learning processes that comes up talking and trying out things and discussing and enjoying the challenges that maths provides rather than just being there having a teacher led as it normally is. This allows more flexibility and more onus on the children trying and having a go. So that's my proposal to you for change in our school which will hopefully raise the table of progress in mathematics. Are there any questions I'd ask? Thank you. We do have a few questions. Thank you. Um, can I start off with um, the fluency and mastery thing? Because is that not something we've always done in school? That, um, we have. We see it saying there's fluency and mastery, but I think it gets muddled up what it actually is, what it means. So the children don't fully understand what it means. I don't think staff do either properly. The workbooks lend themselves to, as they're going through, the questions are more challenging as they develop each um, part of the numeracy curriculum. So children can work through at their own tailored pace. They have to go on the same type of work, but the more skilled a child is in mathematics, they become more fluent, more fluent and they master the, that particular need. So it's, if you've got someone who's very good at maths, they'll go through quite quickly, whereas others will work through at their own pace. So they're all completely the same type of work, but some will do more than others. Mm -hmm. So you get that fluency with it at their own individual tailored need. Um, you, you quoted the cost per year. Yeah. Um, what is the life of the scheme? And also the life of the books, how... I think the children, are, the children are very careful and they know, I think, they will respect the materials that we've got. And if the teachers are quite robust in saying this is the material that we've got and we have to look after these, these pieces of equipment because they are expensive, I think they will look after them. You might get one or two that might get a little bit doggy in occasionally, which we, we can replace occasionally. Six nights nine every now and then isn't too bad a hit, but you can't do a whole class set again, it's not practical. So it's just a case of training the children to be very, very careful with them, look after materials. Um, the school I spoke to said the Pearsons are very confident this scheme will go on for quite some time. But I go back to the budget, if we keep spending money on photocopying and teachers running around with the resources, they're also going to neg negate each other anyway for the money. So if that company does ever go bust, which we can't see into the future, we'd have to sort of analyse where we go next with it, maybe. Mm -hmm. uh, you mentioned uh, uh, you visited another school that was using power maths. Um, was that a similar school to ours? Uh, I'm just thinking about children with special needs and the children at a disadvantage. It is a similar school to ours, with a that family as well. They are. Um, a little bit more affluent in the area, but they do have the same sort of children we've got. Yes, they are more privileged, the parents are a bit more wealthy, but they do have the SEN children and disadvantaged children, and they do have some overseas children as well. How has it been working for them? It's been working quite well. Uh, the teacher I spoke to said to say they had one child who was um, from Sweden, found it a bit tricky at first to get the language going through. Um, had a discussion with the dad. And he thinks it's just a language barrier, but the teacher picked up because he thinks that child has got some sort of SEN. But because they're quite new to the school at the moment, they can't sort of work out where to go with. The teacher's quite adamant we are at SEN, not it's not a language barrier. But yeah, I think they're very, very similar to what our school is, and I think our children would embrace that quite quickly. Mm. What about the higher ability children? 
the horribility to a stretch because I am going to show an example here. I'll show a particular example here. So if I put this page here around and problem solving, racial proportion, all children, all children, this was your daily task, would start here after quite a lot of input to the resource materials that are provided for the uh, scheme. Once you know your input and you talk together and build it up together, they start working to their own and, and pace. But as you come into um, further parts of the, of the lesson, some children will naturally slow down here because that's their ability, they'll stop. But the more able, higher ability, will start pushing through to the challenge type questions up here, which are designed for the higher ability children. These questions are quite, quite in depth and quite taxing. So I'd anticipate that not a lot of children will get this far. They'll probably work through their own pace. And some lessons will be quite easier than others. But the lessons will see quite sequence as well. This is lesson number nine in this particular series here. And you've got lesson 10, lesson 11, still lesson 11, lesson 12. And it's all quite developed up. But as you go through, it's going to become more and more challenging building prior skills that they haven't learned. So every section has always got a challenge section as well. So the more able ones will be challenged to get deeper and deeper into that. And if we do have those children who are anomalies who are beyond that, yeah. we're then as teachers have to look at find other materials to, to push and develop their needs even further. So it might be a case of looking at some year seven material possibly to boost that further, those children. Is it the same book that they use from the beginning of the scheme and just work their way through the book as they're working up through school? Or is it a different book for each year? Year groups. So this is... Um, Oh, sorry, yes. So this is for the summer term for year group six. So there'd be one C, two C, etc. for the different year groups. So if we went with uh, what I said before, year group specific rather than mixed year groups, it takes away that uh, difficulty of trying to teach two lessons in one yes. because that wouldn't work. But in our school, we've got the flexibility to have discrete year groups. So every year group, we start with one A for the uh, autumn term, then one B for the spring, and then one C for the year ones, etc. But the themes are met, met to national curriculum needs that they need. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 with with um, with us, with the last 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 I think, it's a, it's a really valuable stream. So we will perhaps hear more about it. Um. Yeah, thank you. Well, what we'll do is um, we're going to try this out for this term across the year groups. Yeah and then make a decision as a school where we go with it. The likelihood is we probably will go down that route, hopefully. Yeah, it looks, looks good at first, first looks. The children seem to like it, what we've seen so far. And then we'll roll it out yeah. from there, really. And then just maybe we've got to be careful with the, um, look at the data it chucks out yeah. at some point to analyze that. Actually, when is data going to be analyzed and how long can we wait to look at it and see if yeah. it's working in our school and not working. Yeah. Um, and I'll have those issues, really. That's great, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.